Hello and welcome to the safe space. Yeah, this week we are talking about favorite movies. So the reason I wanted to do a safe space about your favorite movies, um, because it's an, it's an underlooked aspect of the, excuse me, kind of thing that can affect people's mental health. People don't realize that it can affect people. It's fed to me before. Um, so, so for me, it's not just movies, it's TV, it's music. Music is arguably arguably worse than movies or TV or anything like that. Music is so subjective. Um, even more than films and TV that people just get so much crap and it can deeply affect uh, that person's mental health. So I wanted to do this, um, I wanted to do it for movies because I've never fully ended up with a, like, top five or even top ten list of favourite albums or something like that. Um, I don't know why, I listen to a lot of music, but just never, it just sort of washes over me in a different way to what films do for film and TV. The like visual medium uh, seems to sit with me better. Don't know where it is. So I'm going to give you my top five list of movies. Um, there's going to be no judgment from you guys. There's going to be no judgment from me uh, about yours. If you want to sit in the chat and say about yours you are more than welcome if you are the biggest most bodybuilding straight ass white guy in the world but your favorite movie is Mamma Mia I don't care that is your favorite movie that's that simple as you are perfectly entitled to that opinion and I don't care and um, like I said this is just because people don't realise how much it can affect someone when they go, no, you're wrong about your favourite movie. So we're going to play little scenes from each of the top five movies on my list and then go from there. And yeah. So let's, without further ado, let's crack on. So my top five Film uh, list begins at number five with the 1998 classic comic book classic that is Blade. And the reason I like this movie. Um, it's got everything really it's just such a cool film in general it's wesley snipes looking completely badass being completely badass there's the back of the box has the best quote that i can think of for any vampire movie which is enough blood to reflux titanic what more can you say so we're going to watch the first fight, which is probably one of the coolest opening fight scenes of any movie ever. Let's do that. I mean, just look how badass does he look. Honestly. It's just, it's, it's a good indication of how modern vampires would 
be here, I think. Especially back in the 90s, it was all rages and stuff. Content only, by the way. This lass here is about to come up here. That is an actress called Tracy Wells. Tracy Wells has an interesting history in um, um, which I will go on to after we watch this particular scene. We're not going to watch all the scenes, but we're just going to watch those badass moments. I was so pumped to see this movie that I was on the walk back to my friend's house and was doing gym spin kicks in the street, but that's how great I got. Oh, bro, I saw it in the cinema. Right there, you're 17. I want to do that move. I want to do one cut and just like flip it around and side so and get myself. It's just, it's just like, so cool. So cool. Yeah, that's him. Get him. Fuck that's him. him. That's him. Get him. Fuck him up. We're gonna jack you up. Love this Take bit with the sword. This <laughs> man's gonna kick some ass. Glaive. I wish you could throw it like this with one this bit as well. It's just a nice smile. Such a cool. Oh. Alright, that's all we're going to show on this particular scene because it's all the best bits, to be fair. But yeah, Blade is such a cool comic when he's unfairly. Uh, given not or not given enough credit for being the film that kicked off the comic book revolution. Everybody thinks it was X Men. It was probably Blade, to be honest. Blade has two sequels: Blade Two and Blade Trinity. Blade Two also a really good film. Blade Trinity probably shouldn't exist if we've been perfectly honest. Saved by Ryan Reynolds. Um. But, yeah, it's not a good film. Uh, apparently that's because Wesley Snipes hated the director. So, there you go, that's why. So, the last we were talking about in the Tracy Wars, Tracy Wars has an interesting history because he almost single-handedly destroyed the US porn industry. Random fact. But basically what happened was she was 16, she lied on an application form for an adult movie and said she was 18. Um, and everyone just said, oh, she's a young looking 18 year old, which you get, you do get. Um, yeah, it turns out she was actually 16 and because America is full of God fearing idiots. Sorry, but it is. Um, it got passed up to Congress and they were on about completely destroying on the industry because clearly it's preying on minors and stuff, all because she put 18 instead of 16 on the thing. It's just actual craziness, is that? So, yeah, just a random fact I know about the randomness at the start of Blade. So, yeah, so that's Blade. Number four on my list is an interesting one. So there is a concept. I subscribe to of the good bad movie. All right. So the the good bad movie. The idea behind it is that the movie is crap. Everybody who watches it knows it's kind of crap. But some people who watch it just go, you know what? I know the budget's low. 
the, the script is kind of bad and stuff like that the effects can be rubbish but I just really enjoy it okay. Gary Hero is that one for me it is a it is a good bad movie it is one of it, right, but the thing about it is the fight scenes in it are some of the coolest fight scenes I've seen in movies like 200 million dollar Marvel movies have had worse fight scenes than they're in this movie so not many love you but yeah so I really really like Guy with Dark Hero it um, is based on a Japanese manga and anime um which is how I came across it through the anime. Um, and then the first movie in the live action series over here was called Mutronics. I think in the States it was just called The Giver um, and features everybody's lightsaber wielding favorite farm boy, Mark Hamill, as a grizzled cop in post Star Wars roles. Um, Neutronics is a bad movie. Like, I, I want to be able to defend Neutronics, but Neutronics is just straight up a bad film. Also, I haven't rewatched a clip from Neutronics earlier. I realized that the southern guy from Prison Break, who's constantly double crossing and ended up with his hand chopped off, I can't remember the character's name or the actor's name, but he's in that in one of his first roles. Random. Um, but yeah, so Gave Dark Hero is the sequel to Mutronics with a bigger budget, better fights. Um, because the the fight scenes in Mutronics were dire. They really were dire. There was like no martial arts skill at all. It just it's like down to the fighting stance that the guy in the guy unit used was like just the dumbest thing ever. It just didn't make any sense at all. This one is, is so much better. We're going to watch... I admit it's Final Battle, so it is kind of spoilery in that, but it's also probably the coolest fight scene in the whole film. Um, and the idea behind this is the uh, a shadowy column operation called Kronos had discovered that aliens created humans as biological weapons so that we could fight their wars for them. They also then instilled us with the ability to turn into monsters called Zonoids or Bal. And Kronos then started turning people into Zonoids and put them on become hyper evil corporation that wants to take over the world. They also discovered something called the Gaiva Unit, which basically gives humans powered biological armor and blocks the original aliens who created humans' ability to psychically control humans. So they. The humans with the Gaivas then rebelled. The Zonoid. The ones who could turn into Zonoids intermingled with the ones who couldn't and just became part of humanity's bloodline. I like the idea that humans were created as biological weapons. Nice alternative to God creators or evolution. So we're going to watch the final fight, uh, fight of Gaivadak Hero. Super cool fight. Um, hope you enjoy it. And this is fourth on my top five favorite movies of all time. So tell me, who's going to protect the protector? Biomorph. That's his only who's also got a guy in him. Now, you may recognize the voice of Guyver. The good guy, that guy. Because Sean Barker, who is the guy in this, is played by a different character from Neutronics, but he's played by a guy called David Hater. If that name sounds familiar, he's the voice of Solid Snake. And also, Randy wrote the X Men movie. 
the original two. Not many good kicks in this fight scene. That's great. Acrobatic. Walking fight scenes. That's Kicks. I do it when I'm inspiring and stuff. <laughs> it's cool. But this, this is a dumb It's really a man. The following is a dumb one. This 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 is Join us and admire the fellow brother. <laughs> Brian, the, the bad guy in this, is a, is a good bad guy because he's so fanatically devoted to the criminal's cause. He's, he's basically a religious zealot at some point. And I just think he's quite a cool, menacing character, especially when he gets the unit. The guy in the unit. This must have brought the snowman's back. It really must have. <laughs> and those of you who've read my book, um, we will see some inspiration in this. There's the wrist blades and the forearm blades. It's immediately ripped off from this, but I just think they're, they're uh, cool ways to do such weapons. So. Absolutely loves it. Takes his legs. <laughs> Launches him. Love that movie. Stabbed in the hip. Why is that much blood coming out of it? I don't get it. Do you wonder why this affects him? Is because the thing that she's just shot is called the control middle, and the control middle controls. And you see, he's got one as well. Controls game mode. If you take it out, the rest of the arm that overloads in power and basically eats the most alive. A cool way to limit the power. So, yes, that was number four on my list. Gaiva, Dark Hero. Very cool. Brad Fell. <laughs> some, of the, some of the other fights in it are um, also really cool. And yeah, I just, I, I know that it's a bad film. But I also really enjoy it. I do.
So we're gonna move on. Um, and so you can tell I'm a child in the eighties and the nineties. Um, with the following. Thing. Let me just try and find a slightly better clip. Okay, better clip. Right. So yeah, I'm I am a child of the eighties and nineties. I am I can't help it. Do I look so dark? Um Okay. That can be an easy deal. <laughs> right, I'm the child of the eighties and 90s. Um, so I was born in 1981, and um, my teenage years were mainly the 90s. So a lot of stuff on my list came out around then. Now I appreciate that the movie making has got better. The effects they can use has got a lot better. And then the following movie has actually been rebooted fairly recently. Um, however, those movies compared are crap. Because this one from 1990, it used practical effects as much as it possibly can do because that's what they had in 1990. Like digital effects weren't a thing really. You couldn't fully CG the motion capture the main four characters hint as to what I'm going to go for there um, so they had to use full body suits now how the guys who were doing the moves in these suits could pull them off I have no idea but it worked, it absolutely worked and the movie we're talking about is the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1990 this film influenced um, a lot of my Silly little quips and my sense of humor, and did also, or was in part responsible, along with the Karate Kid and a couple of other films, um, responsible for a lifelong love of martial arts and martial arts movies. Because that's what the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is it's a martial arts movie, the remake from a few years ago. They made a science fiction movie, and the sequel they made a science fiction movie. They never, they didn't make a, another martial arts movie. The original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a martial arts movie. They are ninjas, not some weird sci-fi thing battling a robotized version of Shredder. Shredder leads ninjas a ninja clan that's what he is so we're gonna watch the turtles versus the shredder from teenage mutant ninja turtles 1990 it's an awesome fight scene it's got some quality lines that sum up the turtles and things and yeah just one of my favorite all-time fight scenes let alone one of my favorite all-time movies oh. Like the music for the shredder in this is just cool as Does anybody have any idea about who or what this is? I don't know. But I'll bet I never asked to look for a can opener. <laughs> Good line. You fight well. In the old style. 
but you've caused me enough trouble. Now you face the Shredder. I'm sure the suit does not even look good in this, but... Right, the faces on the turtles were all animatronic, so they had to watch a documentary on it, and they had like a hand in these machines, and as they did that, the faces moved. This guy's good. Yeah. Why don't you go next? Thank you. Uh, match it for it? I love the idea that you rock, paper, scissors, see who writes him next. Great. Much for family, huh? See, look, wait, wait. You got Splinter there. It's, well, it's basically a puppet. Looks infinitely better than the one that I knew was. Exactly. What point did we lose control here? Maybe somebody ought to tell him that we're the good guys. Yeah. Any thoughts? I've only got one thought. <laughs> this guy knows who Splinter is. Love this bit. It's really cool. Right. Here we go. This vision, this fight scene was actually cut out by the first vision of this I saw. Because when this movie was released. It was deemed that too many kids was thinking the nunchucks were cool, picking them up and seriously hurting themselves. And so a law was passed in the UK where all the pictures of nunchucks were not allowed. So this movie was heavily edited. I also know Mikey's, Michelangelo's best bits because they weren't allowed to show nunchucks on screen. Actual cartoon Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles because it weren't allowed to be called ninjas anymore. He gave Michelangelo a grappling hook because he couldn't have nunchucks for the UK version. Where's Splinter? Ah, oh, the rat! I knew it has a name. I watched this bit and then. Oh. He dies. Huh? Weapons. Just cool fights in people. Just cool fights in. That's what we want. So that's number three on the list. Um. But the new ones are just not as good. They made science fiction movies and the Ninja Turtles and ninjas. They are them martial arts people. Why? Oh, why? Did they make a science fiction movie about it? They took the wrong bits of the fiction. <laughs> Um. Right, so the next one is a bit of a cheat, I will admit. So there are two I like my comedy wacky and crazy. Right? I do. I can't help it. I just do. Um so like I never got The Office, for example. I don't find any version of The Office funny, particularly. <laughs> and I just find it a bit too cringeworthy. Um, so, two comedy films that really got me going as a kid and really had me rolling with laughter. And I just absolutely love that quoted to today. And I'm still quoting today. I actually did something that I got from one of these movies earlier tonight. Um, I do it every time I make a joke about my stream. Um, 
and that is an equal thing is Ventura, Pet Detective, and The Mask. Both early Jim Carrey movies, um, but they just came about at a time in my life when I was developing my sense of humor and things like that, and I just absolutely love them. Are they the greatest comedy movies of all time? Probably not. Okay. I love them all the same. I really, really do. So yeah, this this list is not the most intellectual or anything like that. It's not the height of comedy, these two, but I just I abs that. absolutely love them. Um, I could not find a very good Ace Ventura Pet Detective Theme. Okay, in that. terms of quality, That's so we'll just have to watch this. It's extremely blurry. It's blurry for me as well, guys. So. Either phone. Have a bad night. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way. <laughs> said this to some people so, before. animals can sense evil. Who let Dr. Doolittle in? It's so blurry. I hate that this is so blurry, but it's this the best version of the scene. Business. We'll let you know if the coroner finds a tick. E, <laughs> 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 uh, forget it. She's right. Besides, I wouldn't want somebody tracing my steps, pointing out all the mistakes I was making. See, this, this movie influenced more of my behavior than I would probably like to admit. But, it just... When you hilarious. So, when you're really good you don't it. think this is an obvious suicide, Mr. Pet Detective? Well, I wouldn't say that. Lord knows there's plenty of evidence here to support your theory. Except, of course, for that spot of blood on the railing over there. <laughs> May I tell you what I think happened? Alrighty then. Oh, Roger yeah. Badacker went out after work. He had a few drinks and he came home, but he wasn't alone. Someone else was with him in this apartment. There was a struggle and he was thrown over that balcony. Roger Badacker didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. Well, that's a very entertaining story, but unfortunately, <laughs> real detectives have to worry about that little thing. I wanted to do this in drama yes. class when I was in high school. Uh -oh. I could get no one to do it. I think anymore. I heard a toilet flush. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody lost a turtle. <laughs> the, the mask scene that we're going to watch after this is yes, the, what I wanted to do more in drama oh, class, though. Good work. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, there is just one more thing, Lieutenant. This woman is Roger Padacker's neighbor. She lives across the hall. She said she heard a scream. Is that right, ma'am? Right. And you said you had to open the balcony door when you keyed into the room? Yeah, that's true. You're certain you had to open this door? Yeah, I'm sure. What's the point, Ventura? Only this. <laughs> Soundproof glass. There's no way that neighbor could have heard Pedactor scream on the way down with that door shut. The scream she heard came from inside this apartment before he was thrown over the balcony, and the murderer closed the door before he left. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah! Can you feel that, buddy? Huh? 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 <laughs> and exercise the demons. This house is clear. I do that a little bit too well, don't I? <laughs> Pancake time. Okay. Yeah, let's see. All right, lead is for where's the wall in front of the mask. So again, this is slightly better quality. It's not quite as blurry, but I the reason I like comedy like this is because I grew up with the Looney Tunes. 
on a, like I remember being sat at home watching TV on a Saturday and Looney Tunes was on at the afternoon watching Looney Tunes and it might be like the A-Team or Elwolf or something like that and afterwards and that was my at the TV watching and it just it, to like the Looney Tunes we just 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 spoke to me <laughs> when the mask came on especially yeah so this is this is the scene i wanted to do i can't turn off the subtitles i'm sorry um yeah this is a scene I wanted to do at drums class. Come on, not this bit specifically, but the bit after he turns after the mask. But you can do this now. I'm working out ways to do the effects, because obviously you can't do all this nonsense in the high school drama class. You can, you can copy the sound effects from the movies. Wear some of it, similar, and all this. Act the same. P-A-R-T. Why? Yes. It was like this bit I was trying to work out with it, what to do. Uh, but you can have someone with like a fishy, basically a fishing rod and a, an old iron clock bouncing it about and then just sort of pick up the mallet from... It's possible. <laughs> this bit, how do you do this bit? Google AI and glasses. Come on, mate, what? I don't know how you do this bit apart from jumping about or right? jumping on. This bit you'd have to fake quite a lot, but again, Google Google the glasses. What ha? I'm roadkill! Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, that's a my number two top five movies of all time. Ace Ventura: Pet Detective slash The Mask. Um, they 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 were both on a, the same keel for me. They really are. They um just influenced behavior and spoke to my comedy sensibilities and stuff like that. I don't I don't get I don't do witty comedy. I want my comedy slapstick and stupid and yeah, that's what, like closest to witty I get the one line is that dead bull. You know, that's that's the closest I get to that. So I'm gonna move on to my favorite all-time movie. Yeah. Just see if I can find. Slightly better. This is a slightly better version of the same thing. Okay. So, I was born in 1981. Okay. And this movie came out in 1986. I was five years old. Important to remember that piece of information because this is the movie I've watched the most over my life. I must have watched it. A couple of hundred times. It's easy, it's not more. Right. Um, the soundtrack for this movie is probably is probably my favourite album, but I have 
many that are on an equal footing with it. So, like I said at the start, I don't really have 10 albums. It's definitely my most listened to album. Um, and it is the one and only movie I have ever cried at. And I have watched Beaches. Um, now, I must admit, again, going back to the pertinent fact of this, I was five at the time. I was crying my eyes out. I was crying my eyes out because my favourite character had just been killed. And we're going to watch the epic final battle uh, of this movie between that character and his mortal enemy. It's not the final bit of the movie. But it is it's actually towards the start of the film but it's an awesome battle with an awesome soundtrack and that movie is the 1986 Transformers the movie it's the animated movie it is the best out of all the Transformers movies by a massive margin it still holds up to day does this film um and i have i don't have this under kids like i have plex server and everything's laid out in specific genres and things like that as far as the movie is not under the kids movies section or anything like that it is under science fiction because if you actually sit and watch it it's just a really good science fiction film that's that's what transformers the movie is so yeah, we're gonna. Without further ado, I present to you Optimus Prime versus Megatron from Transformers: The Movie. Be stopped, no matter the cost. <laughs> you got the touch. You got the power. This song, not only is it the absolute most perfect song for this scene, it's the only other song out of the soundtrack for this movie to be used in the cartoon series for Transformers. Um, yeah, so I'll go into that in a little bit, but whatever, this is just Optimus Prime being a badass from end to end. Jumping up, one down, two down, three down. Just wrecking the Decepticons. Start to finish. One you shall stand, stand, one shall fall. Why throw away your, your life so recklessly? That's a, a question, question you should ask yourself, yourself Megatron. No! I'll crush you with my bare hands! It's just, it's just brilliant. Brilliant. It's a brilliant, brilliant story. That's Prime's fight. The characters, some really famous people voicing characters in this, like um, later on in the movie, there's a character, Galvatron, he's voiced by the legend that is Leonard Nimoy. Um, Unicron, the ultimate big bad, is voiced by Orson Welles, Hot Rod, who's just there, he's voiced by um, Jim Nelson. Who's the punk out of the Breakfast Club? Have you ever seen that? I love how it sums up how evil Megatron is because he says he'll crush him with his bare hands and then the first opportunity he gets, he shoots him. <laughs> shoots at him. So, um, Yeah, uh, I can pretty much recite this entire movie off by heart. That's how much I've seen it. The sterner stuff. That's why Optimus Prime is my favourite, because you won't shoot Megatron if there is any possibility in Hollywood. And even despite all that, in shot that many times in this epic hand to hand battle. It's 
still manages to defeat Premature. Optimus, forgive me. Okay, well, what new? But you could think. The Transformers and uh, the movie, it just flips what you know about the Transformers on the head. The, the cartoon was all the, these are bad guys, these are good guys, the good guys will always win in the end. The, 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 the movie comes, and while, yes, the cynical version is it, they just want to sell more toys and take them out. The, the Decepticons. Just murdering, literally murdering Autobots. There is a, there is a scene where Megatron shoots Ironhide in the face at point blank range because he grabs his foot and he just looks down with utter contempt and says, "Such a heroic nonsense!" And then just shoots him. It's, it's just that's a madness. Um, but it's a Brilliant thing, the song you heard there, yeah, which we're gonna watch another bit from Transformers. This is like one of the, the final bits of spoilers, but it did come out in 1982 and 1986. Even. So, you watch this bit this is also cool. See if you can spot Lennon in New York. Come out, Autobot! We all must die sometime! Not Die so easily, or I might have a sense of satisfaction now. See, this is the following is what should have happened at the start of 2020 to get rid of Corona. Arise, Rodimus Prime. Optimus. No. Random fact about this song as well if you watch the film Heat Notes. This is the song that Dirk Diggler is singing in the music piece in the end of that film. the end of the road, Galvatron. Yeah, just goes, no, you're done, Galvatron. Picks him up and throws him, literally throws him into the base. Doesn't even shoot him. Just picks him up and watches it. <laughs> Light our darkest power. The one thing, the best of all, is the only thing that can strike from the newborn and eating any plant that he wants is the Matrix, which has just been opened. And you can see it's slowly shining from the inside out. It's also granted hot rod. Power of the Primes and Medium and Rollins Prime. I want to find the scene in the film of the world right now. That's Daniel! Springer! What's going on? No time to answer that now! Let's get out of here! This is where the Arbots have first introduced Rollins Prime. 
So yeah, that right there. Transformers movie, 1986 is my favorite all time movie. It's just, it's a film, it's my happy place film. If I'm feeling down and need a film that I know will cheer me up. Transformers movie is it. It's just such an awesome film. I say, I don't count it as a kid's film. I just think it's an absolutely brilliant science fiction movie um yeah so those are my top five uh movies of all time um i hope you enjoyed the list and remember guys this i did this night as a little bit of fun but people can be affected are you telling them they're wrong for liking their movies and their old favorite all time movie and a lot of the time it is banter and most people will take it as banter but just, just be wary of the fact that some people can take it not as banter they could not be that because it is certainly possible for that to be the case um, as I said at the start, music is the same way, TV is the same way, music is more, more that way than anything else. Um, it's so subjective and the number of people who talk about their favourite bands and tell the people that they're idiots for liking certain bands. Like this is this, there's this TV show called Gilmore Girls, don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called Gilmore Girls. Me and the wife must have watched the full run of the Gilmore Girls three or four times um, during the early 2000s um, and stuff. And uh, it's a really good show. And the idea is that uh, Lorelei Gilmore uh, got pregnant at 15, raised her daughter by herself, and it's all about her daughter is now also 15 going up to full womanhood and stuff and the dad is out of the picture because obviously they got too young and he wasn't really prepared for doing it but there's this brilliant scene in one of them where like the the dad has sort of got back back into their lives or it's got back together with Lorelei and, and having this argument <laughs> Um, about one of my favorite bands. <laughs> yeah, and she just turns around and goes, you like the offspring. It's like the offspring are good. It's like the, the offspring have one color per se. Aggression that they use over and over again. <laughs> it's just, it sticks in my mind. And it sticks in my mind for the reason that I'm doing this stream uh, today. It's... If, like, he, he likes the offspring. Who cares? Those are his favourite, right? they may not be the height of intellectualism, they may not be able to write the greatest song in the world. It shouldn't matter. He likes them, who cares? That's him. There's only ever been one album they've encountered where just about everybody I've ever encountered has gone, you know, that's a classic album. And that is the Red Hot Chili Peppers Californication. And I remember going around my halls in uni, talking with multiple people about that album, and someone just went, someone just summed it up and going, yeah, but they're all classics on this album. It's true. So, yeah, so music is more subjective, but movies can be that way as well. I'm 39 years old, one of my favourite all-time TV shows is Power Rangers. And I don't care who knows it. I really don't. I used to, but I don't anymore. Because it's my favourite. I shouldn't be made to feel bad for that. Whether I'm 13 or 39, it doesn't matter. 
I am who I am. And that includes loving Power Rangers. I haven't seen every single episode of Power Rangers ever made. Um, I need to go back and watch some of the series, which I'm fully intending to do in, at some point since we're all on Netflix. Um, yeah, it's just... It's one of the things I don't care whether people go, what the hell are you 39 years old? So I'm 39 years old. I like Power Rangers. Sue me. Not bothered. Not bothered at all. So, yeah. So just be wary, guys, of telling people they're wrong when it comes to their favorite movies. Just ask them, rather than say that, ask them why. Why, why is that movie your favorite? And just try and understand. And yeah. So, thank you for watching. This has been the Safe Space. And then don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, list your top five movies down in the comments. Right, it really does help me out all these things. So, thank you so much. And I will catch you in the next one.